पायनियर इन द एक्सटेंशन फॉरेस्ट इन मध्य प्रदेश इन द फॉर्मेटिव इयर्स एंड वी लुक फॉरवर्ड टू हैव काइंड ऑफ डायनेमिक लीडरशिप फ्रॉम हिम एंड पर्टिकुलरली विद द काइंड ऑफ एंथुसियाजम एंड विलिंगनेस एक्सटेंडेड बाय बरकतुल्लाह यूनिवर्सिटी अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ डॉक्टर आर जे राव आई हैव नो डाउट्स दैट दिस एकेडमिक डायलॉग को एक्चुअली लीड टू सम एक्शन ऑन ग्राउंड आल्सो so with that i once again uh, congratulate each one of us on world environment day thank you very much so so please unmute yourself bhattacharya sir ha yeah thank you very much uh, pankaj you have very rightly mentioned that uh, sustainable development is a perception so i remind i remember mahatma gandhi saying in 1933 uh, he what he perceived sustainable development uh in in his own way which now we call sustainable forest management unhone kya kaha mahatma gandhi ki hamare 5 mil jungle ke 5 mil ke daire mein rehne wale sare logon ko jungal se jungal aadharit jo bhi hamari avashyakta hai unki poorti honi chahiye which we have we have perceived in sustainable forest management resolution in 1991 so he integrated community into ecosystem and he he thought of लॉन्ग टर्म सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द रिसोर्स कि भाई हमारे कम्युनिटी की सारी आवश्यकता है पांच मिल में पूरी हो जानी चाहिए आई एम श्योर विथ योर इनपुट योर पर्सनल इनपुट एंड योर इंस्टीट्यूशनल इनपुट बैम्बू कैन द रोल ऑफ बैम्बू कैन बी एनविसेज इन द राइट डायरेक्शन स्पेशली लाइक बैम्बू बेस्ड इंडस्ट्रीज यू मैं ऑल्सो So I'll request you to take up the bamboo policy, some uh, uh, consultations on bamboo policy. And uh, as you also suggested about the uh, this uh, internship students, you know. So we are planning to start one uh, uh, experiential learning and internship program, um, mainly at uh, Balaghat. Uh, not only bamboo, also natural resources. लाइक एन टी एफ पी इको टूरिज्म बैम्बू इन सबको मिला के एक एक्सपीरियंशियल लर्निंग और इंटर्नशिप प्रोग्राम स्टूडेंट्स के लिए हम लोग स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं सो थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट किशनेन्द्रु चौधरी द प्रोजेक्ट कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ रीजनल साइंस सेंटर टू शेयर हिज व्यूज मेनली ही हैज बीन की फैक्टर विद ज्वाइनिंग दिस होल इनिशिएटिव विद स्टूडेंट्स Oh, uh, for all activities he has been he has been a motivating factor to student and i'm sure the, the the students are the future custodian of environment so connecting student with all the uh, green issues and environment krishnandu yeah uh, very good evening uh, i express my sincere gratitude to all the dignitaries in this digital platform i thank dr rj rao sir vc barkutra university and dr ak bhattacharya sir for taking us as a companion although i am an odd man in this forum in terms of my academics but one thing that connects me here i am i thank dr group. rj rao to the desired goal of sustainable development uh, development is desire of every individual in moving towards the future for prosperity and peaceful living individual development is uh, linked with development of the region which is connected with the development of the state subsequently nation and world as a whole and this linked development has mostly prioritized only two dimensions what i have learned so far uh, toward the discussion social and economic somehow one other very important dimension which has been left or focus is not has been removed is our environment and our environment which has evolved for a billion of years but it has been somehow hampered by modern man existence uh and towards this i think a lot of people are thinking and and for that reason this particular topic has come up the sustainable sustainable development goals and what i think in 1987 some some thoughts were given and even united nation also provided us with 17 sustainable development goal which has to be achieved by 2030 from science center's perspective uh we have mandate of which one is to grow awareness to popularize science in general mass and especially in young children uh we also encourage young children to inculcate scientific temperament 
we promote innovations through various activities one such is like model exhibition competitions uh, the motivation of such competition is we believe it is highly needed at the present scenario that young student with their set of knowledge shall engage themselves in generating new ideas or design of system to solve problem they have perceived in their society or with what the society is facing towards this competition we receive various ideas concepts and designs but uh, we have observed there are either equitable viable or bearable solution but not very few are sustainable so here i feel that uh, there is need to grow awareness among the young student about the underlying concepts of sustainable development and uh, also what are the different processes are involved in uh, product design basically our motive is uh, what is required in sustainable development is to uh, the mode of using citizen science where all the people or the students all the citizen has to be engaged so that uh, uh, the mass benefit what is desired of the sustainable goal can be achieved and that is uh, what i think this webinar will uh, help a lot and uh, and it will bridge the gap and also will provide a way of thinking for considering different dimension of sustainable development well this is what we are trying from our end also as because with the support of mp forest department we are trying to develop one small park in the name of oxygen park where we are going to um, uh, uh, actually uh, plant uh, bamboo trees and uh, such kind of small parks can become a conceptual learning for young students who are coming to science center and they will get some kind of understanding about what these means how uh, uh, a practical example like bamboo can be a example for uh, uh, their thought process yeah, this kind of thing can be done which will uh, provide us a better prosperous uh, prosperous and peaceful future i close my talk here and wish a uh, very best of luck for the success of this webinar thank you very much so you are mute so you are mute okay thank you thank you krishnandu you have rightly mentioned that the sustainable development is a way of life i consider so i would like to share here two things actually one is sustainable development should be undercurrent for all our schemes projects it should be an undercurrent all our initiatives number two if you remember we had millennium development goes from 2000 to 2015 so millennium development goals had uh, eight eight mandates and it was mandated to eradicate uh, poverty by 2015 then we shifted to sustainable development goals and part uh, 2030 i i strongly feel that these are sustainable development goals are actually tools they are not goals so and and the ultimate goal is sustainable development so all these tools they will lead us to to achieve the ultimate goal of sustainable development so i think we have to uh, re uh, review this uh, I'll, i'll request hans to consider that in my opinion sustainable development goals are actually tools and there are strategies and uh, criteria indicators all that and um, uh, and the and its ultimate goal is the sustainable development is the ultimate and any other at least uh, you can take up a, a project uh, like uh, catch them young for uh, bamboo the students we had organized a series of uh, slogan writing and uh, paintings at uh, the school children they catch them young for bamboo the uh, of course for sustainable development that you can consider so now the the charu uh, is the probably he is the only dr charu chandra kode he is the only uh, phd in the country on bamboo construction so he is a bamboo construction uh, expert not only in uh, theory and research also practice he is doing that also through his organization so he i think he he'll uh, he's going to be an asset for the whole bamboo sector and he is uh, he is going to at the right place so we'll take his help for uh, the bamboo construction the especially the mega construction which are challenge and he has uh, done uttam you can see that uh, madhyanchal uh, double story building the the, the barrack the uh, security guards barrack this is probably the first uh, double story building in, in uh, at least madhya pradesh bamboo uh, structure in uh, madhya pradesh so and he uh, it go, he got some award also for that so he has done his phd in bamboo in india and he has worked in 
Finland for quite some time on uh, this bamboo construction. So he is a uh, is a very good resource person for bamboo construction in India. So uh, Charu. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir, and uh, very good afternoon, to everybody. Uh, thank you very much to uh, consider me to be part of this wonderful initiative by Barkatullah University and uh, Balaghat uh, Entrepreneurship Development uh, efforts. So, all the dignitaries, it was uh, very good to hear all, and uh, we'll also be hearing uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, sir, as well as uh, hands. And um, especially, I would uh, quickly want to, uh, in this limited time, I would quickly line, want to focus on the construction aspects and how the sustainability from uh, my perspective we can achieve. Because what uh, you have a separate webinar also. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I, I have quickly prepared some slides so that we can, you know, uh, set the ball rolling. So, uh, like, sure, sure, please. Uh, Subuddhi sir had uh, uh, very rightly uh, stressed on plantation initiatives and the initiatives that MP Bamboo Mission is taking up, as well as uh, Balaghat is already into handicraft and furniture making. Uh, plus, uh, there were some other uh, submissions that uh, farmers are very much, uh, you know, motivated to plant. But the whole idea basically falls short when the farmers are not able to find market. And uh, the sectors like furniture and handicraft, they are not the major consumers or the guzzlers of bamboo, which can, you know, consume bamboo in the scale or at the rate at which it grows. So what we see is that uh, construction is uh, only one such sector which has the potential to justify all the farmers or their produce. And that I would really want to present uh, a few slides which can, uh, you know, give a good insight into our work, which we have already done in this area. So I'm sharing my uh, window. So it's uh, myself uh, uh, giving a talk on bamboo and sustainable development. I'll be shortly joining as assistant professor Center for Technology Alternatives uh, in Rural Areas, IIT Bombay. Uh, so in my perspective, uh, what sustainable development in regards to bamboo is uh, the infrastructure research required. That is, the investigate the material, uh, bamboo material, develop structural elements, develop technologies of uh, you know creating uh, columns, beams, slabs, and things like that I with can't bamboo. See your and then Sorry, sir. I can't see your presentation. Is it there on the screen? Yes, yes. It is there. Uh, Ria, can you see? I have, yes, I, have, I have shared my window. Yes, sir. I, I, have, I have shared my window. Are you able to see me? No, sir. Not no, sir. You are not visible. Your slides are not visible, sir. So sir, open. unpin yourself. Unpin yourself. Now it is visible, sir. Pin the presentation. Right? Pin the presentation, sir. So your okay. presentation slide is visible, but your yeah. uh, Usko presentation ko click karo. Niche jo hai na, present P so hai, mini so Minimize the window and just open the PPT. Minimize the entire window and open the PPT. No, niche PP, uh, PPT ka jo dikh raha click kar do. Niche ekdam, uh, niche jo scroll, is scroll is hai, right? niche bar jo hai, down below right. the laptop. Wahan pe P ka ah, wo dikh raha hai, click kar do. Usko click karo. PPT का जो आइकॉन दिख रहा है उसको क्लिक करो हां वही किया है सर इज इट नहीं वो नहीं दिख रहा तुम्हारा प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन नहीं हुआ है PPT जो दिख नहीं रहा है आई आई सो सो स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग सर स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग एंड वन मोर टाइम रिपीट द प्रोसेस श्योर श्योर आई एम डूइंग दैट ओनली <laughs> okay, so is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, full screen yeah, is yeah. visible. Yeah, there, yes. there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. You can see that. 
Yeah, so uh, I'll be joining shortly uh, to Center for Technology Alternative in Rural Area at Bombay as the assistant professor. And uh, in my perspective, sustainable development with bamboo is primarily about the infrastructure research required for which uh, the materials, structures, and technology development needs to take place. And we have to demonstrate them and then disseminate it. Uh, so the underlying goal of our research is to equip the rural areas, which is with the ability of processing bamboo into a value-added product in the form of main load-bearing structural elements right at the village level and enable them to become the suppliers of certified quality structural elements with bamboo for the agriculture and rural infrastructure. So I will take you through some of our work. Uh, this uh, bamboo-based uh, single story structure we built at IIT Delhi during my PhD program. I did my PhD from IIT Delhi, uh, from Center for Rural Development. So this is the work we did over there. Uh, this is the one which uh, Bhattacharya sir was talking about. And we are really thankful to Bhattacharya sir as well as BB Singh sir uh, from MP State Bamboo Mission who funded us uh, this project. So this is the two level bamboo structure in which all the columns, slabs, wall panels, beams, everything are made with bamboo only. And it's the first of its kind in India, sir, uh, because uh, there is not a single joinery using uh, any nut, bolt, steel, or wire, or nails, or anything. So it's completely all connections and everything are with bamboo. So this is again a kind of a gazebo that we built with bamboo. Again, all connections with uh, bamboo in this too. So this was uh, funded by uh, Delhi Development Authority. And this is a bamboo goshala that uh, we built just recently. So this is again a uh, eight meter clear span. So you can see nearly two rows of cows you can uh, manage in this whole uh, goshala. It's around uh, 50 feet long and uh, 24 feet uh, wide. Uh, this is a bamboo yoga hall that we built at IIT De at uh, Delhi. It was supported by Delhi Development Authority. And over here, you can see that, uh, again, uh, various quality of bamboo is used. And even in the uh, roofing, the GI sheet or any steel is not used. The roofing is also done purely with bamboo. So this, again, is shows the potential of uh, this material into the infrastructure sector. Again, this is a work at a golf course in Gurgaon to park the golf cart. So this is, uh, again, architectural uh, uh, design uh, shed. Uh, it is uh, called as the dynamic architecture. So it was, again, designed and built by us. So overall, what uh, a point I want to convey at the launch of this whole seminar or the web webinar is that uh, we have an excellent material as uh, nature's gift to us. And it is uh, for us to you know, uh, find out the potential, investigate it, and use this local material, set up local processing, and skill the local people and the manpower in utilizing it so that uh, we can create an atma power leading to a sustainable development. So that's all. As always, the choice is ours that uh, whether we want to build with uh, sustainable technology or uh, the technology to sustain. So over here in the photograph, you can see the uh, artisans whom we train uh, at IIT Delhi during my PhD program. These are 21 of uh, these uh, artisans. And they are sitting on a bamboo arch, which is uh, only two numbers of such arch. And you'll be surprised that uh, this uh, uh, bamboo arch is built with just one and a half to two inch diameter bamboos. And in all, only six bamboos of dendrocolumus strictus are used. And there are nearly 21 people sitting on it. So that's all from my end, Jaihin. And I extend my best wishes for the webinar. Thank you. Can you close it? Yes, Charu? yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Charu. It was excellent. And uh, I'll request uh, Uttam to uh, consider to have one bamboo structure in Madhya Pradesh, in a big bamboo structure. And uh, we can have one bamboo train, bamboo training uh, hostel at uh, Bahia. So we have all, you have all structures <coughs> at bamboo, bamboo at Bahia. But we, we need one bamboo training hostel because it's a lot of training so we can conduct there. 
as a whole you can, we can you can conduct trainings for the other bamboo missions of the uh, country and uh, uh, that reminds me that the biggest bamboo structure of the world was made by the indian architects in china sangai am i right uh, hans um, uh, it was supposed to be brought back to india but it could not be so okay thank you very much thank you very much uh, all, all the panelists so now we go for the first the question to kari that to just to know that how much the construction cost will come like the shelter or something like how much it will sorry be, what will be the construction cost of a shelter like there are you... actually per square feet no actually uh, since uh, it, it depends on the scaling scaling hmm. you know so um, the uh, normally it will be say same as civil construction or a little higher a little higher because you need you need more uh, intensive intensive uh, workmanship in bamboo so initially initially the bamboo construction work will be a little higher but when it is up scale it's all scaling na? it's all scaling and the uh, china is uh, dominating the world bamboo market because of two things one is quality they have they have tried to maintain the quality and other is scaling say uh, for example take um, uh, bamboo uh, hangers so in india we have a range of bamboo hangers from 28 rupees to 42 rupees and um, and you can have the bamboo hang hangers uh, fancy bamboo hangers from china at the cost of 13 rupees to 15 rupees so because they make huge number they they, they are they, they are manufacturing in huge number so my probably bamboo uh, my hands will share much more so we uh, we get <coughs> to the uh, the the deliberations the there are two deliberation one by, by myself so uh, i'll just share my uh, thoughts experience little knowledge i'm still sailing a small boat in the vast ocean of bamboo and of course the our expert is there so it is uh, we are behind by 13 minutes so we can go we can uh, go up to 5 uh, 5:15 or 5:30 i have taken the permission of riya for that so i i uh, i open my presentation can you see my presentation no sir huh no sir your presentation is not visible yet now it's visible sir now it's visible okay yes. thank you so i i fine okay so i'll uh, mainly i'll focus on the issues which uh, need to be addressed globally and uh, at uh, federally at in, in at the india level uh, for the sustainable the bamboo based sustainable development so uh, again i good evening to all of you thanks to beauty especially dr rajiv uh, arjay rao uh, for uh, providing this unique opportunity to share my little knowledge with the bamboo experts and all uh, i actually look at ba the ba in the present scenario of global covid-19 crisis i look at bamboo as a potential solution for post post covid crisis mitigation at community level uh who and other experts indicate that now we have to find solutions to live with the virus bamboo can provide the three e solutions to combat this crisis three solution uh, what are the three is employment livelihoods entrepreneurship jobs occupations enterprise the businesses and uh, for india indian prime minister's vision of local vocal and global and self reliant india mission bamboo is the most appropriate commodity the entire chain of custody like nature resource the bamboo the human resource the artisans and the technology the machinery tools and the market are in place just a trigger is needed i i had i little i little differ from most of the people in bamboo that there is no market i think market is exist there i'll i'll further uh, discuss on that i think ma still for next 10 years we have a market uh, what uh, we have to either find out or government has to 
facilitate this market. Uh, this is the, the most the versatile bamboo provides all basic needs of human existence. Food, cloth, etc. Roti, kapda, makan. Uh, this is actually, this shows, the, the, the bamboo is the only species with 100% utility. And you can see every part is used. Every part is used. This, this is, you know, uh, bamboo is the both grass and tree, both agriculture and forestry. That probably bamboo is the hardly 100% species. You can see the attributes and the agriculture attributes, forestry attributes, and that both together makes bamboo the 100% species. Uh, globally, 80% of bamboo resource exists in Asia, mainly China and India. Uh, India contributes around 30% of global bamboo area, 90% production share, but hardly 6% global market share. So India's production is uh, around 19% uh, and trade is uh, just 6%. This I have compared, you know, China because China, China is at the top of the world for, for in bamboo sector. Uh, so that's why I have tried to uh, compare with bamboo with uh, uh, double the area of uh, China. Our our contribution to the global market is less than six percent. As although India has the more than double the bamboo area, but the production is very slow, uh, very low. So output is very low. Madhya Pradesh state has the largest bamboo bearing. Uh, followed by Maharashtra, but uh, the Northeast put together uh, uh, the maximum contribution. Uh, as per forest survey of report, India's bamboo forest spread is around 16 million hectare, which is 22% of forest cover. India has around 136 bamboo species. Bamboo area outside forest is that's very interesting, you know, um, uh, 3.29 million hectare. The huge supply demand gap provides an extensive opportunity for bamboo based development. And um, uh, as far at that time, I remember uh, they used to have at least one crore, one crore ba uh, bamboo poles from forest area and four crores from outside the forest area. So, bamboo, outside forest area, the estimated potential uh, of bamboo. And uh, presently, Northeast with tw around 28% of bamboo area contributes around 66% of growing stock. And uh, the Indian bamboo industry is, is an infant stage. Potential is very high. The bamboo and rattan industry of India is uh, around what 28,000 crore. Uh, the employment generation annually is around five five hundred sixteen million uh, million dollars, and uh, income generation annually is one zero thirty two million. This 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 uh, data are a little old, maybe around uh, two thousand sixteen or seventeen. The present contribution of bamboo uh, and the national development. If it is socially, about 86 million Indians depend on bamboo for their livelihoods. Environmental potential, environmental contribution is very high. Potential carbon sequestration value is 1 to 10 million metric ton per year. Uh, they, uh, from forest, 980 million metric ton and uh, bamboo outside forest, 230 million hectare. Economy, uh, as per uh, planning commission, about 500 billion. Uh, INR and US dollar 670 million worth of market exists in bamboo and uh, its products. This is the market potential, you know, this is uh, based on the planning commission and MBA. So you can see the just uh, there's a scan through that. The current estimate of market is around 50,000 crore, the US dollar 10 billion approximately. Bamboo furniture 3625 crore, uh, th uh, th 36.25 billion US dollar. And uh, bamboo shoot 300 crores, uh, approximately three US dollar three billion. Bamboo flooring 1950 crore, approximately US dollar three 19.5 billion. Bamboo pulp 2080 crore, uh, approximately US uh, uh, dollar uh, 20.88 billion. Bamboo housing uh, 1163 crore, approximately US dollar 11.63 billion. Scaffolding uh, 861 crore rupees. And US dollar 8.6 billion. 
this is the maximum market where there is a tremendous market of bamboo mat boards 39108 inr uh, indian rupees crore and approximately us dollar 39.08 billion dollars and here we we are stuck here the bamboo mats tokeni and all that so the miscellaneous there are 600 crore and uh, this is the concern the the, uh, the contribution of bamboo towards the uh, economy through farming bamboo food and uh, beverage industry textile industry bio energy industry pulp and paper industry furniture industry building industries and craft so there is a whole range of um, uh, products um, uh, which are uh, contributing towards economic development there is a huge market supply demand gap as, as we said growers there there, there is a gap there there is a accept the, the, as as uh, rightly mentioned by pankaj uttam and other the, because there is a gap market exists the 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 buyers do not know where to get and the the growers do not know why why to sell and uh, the growers do not have many market access potential buyers do not have any resource access no idea of supply propose there is a the web portal and uh, necessary we initiated uh, the uttam was suggesting that we need to have some uh, platform like Fli uh, flipkart or amazon to provide uh, interaction between buyers and uh, sellers so and uh, something about this um, uh, contribution of bamboo to the sustainable development goals so the bamboo impact base i said it is tremendous uh, uh, tremendous impact base ecological, ecological economic gender equality energy sequ uh, security lifestyle social and how the uh, bamboo contributes to different sustainable development goals through the, these attributes like shelter security livelihood security ecological security and bam food security and energy security bamboo contributes to a, towards the sustainable development goals like one no poverty zero hunger two affordable and clean energy seven uh, decent work and economic growth eight industry innovation and infrastructure nine and sustainable uh, cities and communities eleven climate action thirteen uh, so bamboo bamboo Uh, can contribute to so many sustainable development goals with proper management, proper intervention. These are the some bam uh, bamboo development initiatives in India. Unido 1999, uh, we had a bamboo sector development seminar. There's an international agency like INBAR, UNDP, IFD, Unido. They are working on bamboo. We have National Bamboo Mission, Ministry of Agriculture, and then we have many agencies, uh, MOEF, DCH, MSME, and NID Ministry of Labour. um uh, contributing towards bamboo iit bombay and nid have taken uh, a bamboo product development projects uh, iit bombay has one bamboo studio state governments have now bamboo related offices and policies bamboo development agencies and boards being created in many and some countries so national bamboo mission is there it, it was created in 2006 uh, uh, 7 at the and the ministry of uh, agriculture at a state level we have a state bamboo mission state bamboo missions are working either horticulture agriculture uh, the industries and forest and uh, uh, let, uh, as far to the best of my knowledge they are working best uh, in the states where the bamboo missions are under industries like uh, tripura kerala assam uh, some uh, um, uh, Uh, some changes in the acts and rules regulation ordinances have been taken uh, to to ease the, uh, for the ease of business in bamboo like uh, transit pass so uh, in into uh, 19, indian forest act there has been an amendment in indian forest act 1927 in 2017 uh, they says ordinance amends this definition to remove word bamboo from uh, the category of transportation but it is for uh, bamboos growing outside forest so there is confusion so you have to prove that uh, they you have they have brought bamboo from outside forest uh this is just to share with you and uh, in balaghat the the first bamboo development authority district level bamboo of the authority of the country was created so we we try to have state level bamboo development authority and also federal level bamboo development authority so that there is a proper lineage so there is just quickly you know there is a tremendous livelihood and entrepreneurship opportunities already existing you know in uh, and in different uh, uh, countries and states like bamboo leaves for fodder is a uh, livelihood opportunities there goats and sheep they donkeys in ethiopia donkeys are given bamboo leaves 
and uh, for your uh, bamboo feet uh, feet chicken uh, bamboo feet uh, for chicken is very popular and the, the processing uh, bamboo based livelihood like treated bamboo graded bamboo and these are the bamboo planks and the market based livelihoods the mainstream bamboo bamboo construction actually creates 90% 99% rural jobs and uh, 9% urban jobs if we have bamboo construction the same as bamboo and the craft sector uh, the panel in the rural communities uh, uh, livelihood opportunities are there through then complete this is the complete uh, school equipped with bamboo desk in gujarat packaging industry you know the bamboo the, the tremendous scope and then bamboo majestics this made in india cutlery and uh, bamboo made in india the bamboo pencils made in india then uh, huge the, as i was mentioning the quality and scale volume in volume the baskets and mats the, this is a renewable energy rural livelihoods potential is there farmers is equal to food plus energy so biomass charcoal and power and degrade there's a uh, this is the best species for uh, degraded and wastelands and also for riparian uh, management the uh, river banks there are 68 million hectare of degraded bamboo forest uh, um, um, uh, uh, degraded land is there which can be utilized for bamboo the carbon capture storage bamboo based livelihoods there there are uh, 121 million households use by firewood so bamboo capture both organic and inorganic carbon so there is a potential of bamboo in uh, carbon capture and storage based livelihoods so biomass actually is better than uh, solar and this you know uh, there is a even community based enterprise they are doing excellent like the quality wise also the sustainability design can help facilitate inclusive and sustainable development so uh, primitive tribe groups you know these uh, communities are doing uh, well. sustainability design sustainability design by rhizome this uh, in amdabad inclusive development by sustainable design in tirpura communities in balaghat also some baga communities are doing excellent e eco friendly material both uh, high end you know laptop you think of anything of uh, bam uh, you can have it with the bamboo the wonderful products industrially processed bamboo this industrially processed bamboo uh, but there, there is a you no know, there's a gap between industrial handicraft bamboo and uh, industrial bamboo products and handicraft bamboo products these are traditional applications of bamboo so we can have we can merge both this is you know uh, uh, interesting this the this the this uh, chief uh, arch uh, bamboo artisan he is handicapped so he he is the master artisan and they they are made for the, they, they, these are the bamboo uh, lamp sheds made for some hotel in hong kong and uh, excellent design you know excellent workmanship so they, this can be promoted in on larger scale on business scale they can be up scale uh this is so bob due to bollywood see this is the uh, film producer palad kakkar thakkar he purchased bamboo furniture from balaghat bamboo center there is extensive la, la, range of products like some exam the nid this products nid this is a hangers i was mentioning bamboo products the laptop uh, keyboard uh, this a um, bamboo in bridge over and uh, gajibo the bamboo borders the made at uh, bayar only and there is a bamboo is a complete this is a good example you know at the kerwa kerwa center the bamboo blind then agarbatti briquettes charcoal power generation and leaves to compost so every part is being used this is a good example here near bopal so there is the new horizon mark shields bamboo and then uh, bamboo textiles these are uh, made by nid bamboo uh, uh, tree guard uh, uh come uh, fencing uh, this is cambodia we tried uh, to have some uh, toll plaza bamboo toll plaza along national highways uh, when i was there this is the bamboo uh, we tried it at uh, initiated it at abid ganj in bopal it's a bamboo bus stop the bamboo toilets you know and this is the structure uh, made under uh, charu supervision at delhi bamboo biochar is a new concept is a bamboo quality 
bamboo straw bamboo band we have bamboo band uh, we are at uh, in assam kerala tamil nadu we are planning to have at one uh, bamboo bamboo balaghat bhaiya bamboo band uh this some of the initiatives you know bajpai is actually the serious journey of bamboo started in 2004 when the the, the bamboo world, Con world congress was uh, organized and the bajpai uh, address in that so uh, atul bihari bajpai called bamboo as green gold and miracle uh, miracle plant the the bamboo there was the united nations on uh, forest forum so a consultation was done in 2015 we participated bamboo mission participated and it is a vietnam global bamboo summit 2015 and this is a historical you know historical uh, interministerial summit in 2015 and uh, mr bamas uh, madhya pradesh state bamboo mission actually coordinated that and uh, all ministries all ministers were there all ministry uh, officials were there and these are the actually recommendation into the bamboo development task in niti ayog constitute a committee prepared um, to prepare a white paper based on review of efforts made in the sector so far all the concerned ministries create a national bamboo development authority for convergence and solar uh, synergy among the all the departments organization dealing with bamboo formulate a national bamboo development policy organize one by world bamboo summit in delhi so these are the recommendations and the last one was uh, followed and others are in pipeline this is a bamboo investors meeting in bhopal global bamboo summit in indore so i skip from here there are some actual experiences of different bamboo uh, missions but this is this is the actually i have tried to capture uh, the bamboo based sustainable development model we have everything like we have extensive bamboo resource we have skilled human resource we have a strong technical support we have this niche market the tourism department schools bamboo housing treated bamboo demand is very high so we have everything we have uh, all, all the components in place but now we have to lay, we have to link it actually we have to uh, facilitate the the connectivity among all these components and uh, we can achieve the goal of bamboo based development in madhya pradesh so, so actually our chief minister also uh, agreed for this uh, uh, bamboo this uh, bamboo uh, project model of uh, china uh, he said he let's have by all bamboo furniture in my office the sivara singh the present chief minister during my period and uh, these uh, and also the bamboo uh, products in his office both in uh, secretary office and his house office everything of bamboo bamboo setam bamboo tunnel bamboo kisan bhas yojana bamboo art and crafts catch them young in for bamboo certification online marketing bamboo based ecotourism destination public people private partnerships capacity building of artisan and entrepreneurs bamboo housing bamboo based women entrepreneurship center uh, bamboo toilets uh, yeah actually i hurried that because i have to cover the, I, i wanted to focus on this uh, i have another set 10 minutes fine so i'll be able to do that so actually these are the what are the issues hindering uh, growth of bamboo sector at global level let's see lack of global cooperation steps initiated by different countries for development of bamboo sector have regional impact on it. bamboo is still a stuck somewhere between forestry horticulture and agriculture bamboo doesn't fit neatly into any category a global consensus is required amongst different countries to adopt bamboo as plantation crop trade imbalance is there supply demand gap is very high lack of institutional linkages and transfer of technology lab to uh, field lab to land uh, lab to field uh, nahi lab to land field to factory factory to market this connectivity is missing lack of research and development for exploring innovative bamboo usage which can be locally adopted now uh, issues hindering growth of bamboo sector in india lack of policy and legal framework by bamboo is governed by multiple policies of different ministries with different legal definition given in indian forest act national forest policy and forest rights act convergence issue is uh, great in in india actually that's why i said okay, eight ministries they they have uh, bamboo as subject basically bamboo is in agriculture but other other ministries are involved so every it is everybody's baby as you can say at present seven central ministries 
एग्रीकल्चर फॉरेस्ट रूरल डेवलपमेंट साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी एमएसएमई कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री स्किल डेवलपमेंट एंड एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप हैव डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट इंपैक्ट ऑन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ बांबू सेक्टर सो कन्वर्जेंस इज एन इशू प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ बांबू प्लांटेशन इज क्रिटिकली लो ऑन बोथ फॉरेस्ट एज वेल एज प्राइवेट लैंड्स इट्स जस्ट 2 टन्स पर हेक्टेयर अगेंस्ट अराउंड 20 टू 40 टन्स पर हेक्टेयर इन चाइना lack of quality seedlings management tools and techniques advance uh, another issue is advancement uh, of technology has not reached regional and rural development processing units process harvest management and logistic management are cause of concern so lack of skill manpower at various level managers artisans etc so these are the issues are uh, to address and in order to resolve these issues we uh, in uh, we have suggested certain access action points in in various consultation processes seminars and um, uh, the uh, committees so these are the action points which have emerged through in various consultation seminars workshops um, uh, and discussions on this uh, this is a global level you know uh, action point formulating a forum on bamboo under un on the lines of un ff forestry un forestry forum countries can sign a declaration for establishing un forum on bamboo on the pattern of in a unf development of fair fair trade mechanism for ensuring balance of trade inter agency international agencies like ifed idrc inbar undp unido and eu uh, eu should continue to finance research and development programs on bamboo transfer of technology for improving plant uh, stock most harvest management and value added product manufacturing linkage with voluntary carbon credit uh, um, carbon offset markets for watershed restoration uh, projects development of globally acceptable set of criteria indicators for certification of bamboo plantations and bamboo based products sar countries bamboo organization union with secretariat in india for initial 3 years commitment of countries for maximizing use of bamboo in all government programs like rural housing school office furniture adopting bamboo as an alternative to timber substituting timber with bamboo will require commitment for develop as well as developing nations common declaration for recognizing bamboo as a plantation horticulture crop and there there are many actually if you declare it horticulture plantation crop there are many exemptions automatically they they move uh, fixing voluntary targets for restoration of wetlands wetlands and degraded lands including forests through bamboo plantation and management now uh, action points for strengthening bamboo sector in india consider bamboo as an icon of sustainability and perfect and ideal entity for blue economy in planning process blue economy means holistic holistic integrated approach is there so there is a book by gunter poli i'll request all of you to read that book by gunter poli blue economy Uh, adopt bamboo as the key uh, species for sustainable development uh, solutions uh, dealing with climate change initiative many stimming bamboo in all spheres uh, in all government programs including rural housing public infrastructure school office uh, furniture etc uh, uh, and to begin with a fixing target for using at least 25% bamboo products and uh, our, our chief secretary had agreed you know he said that you can you uh, make uh, bamboo furniture for at least 25 furniture of bamboo um, uh, of bamboo for all the schools uh, chatisgarh in my state is already uh, doing that inclusion of bamboo development task force uh, in niti ayog uh, to create a uh, road map and enabling environment for bamboo based development in the country actually niti ayog is a, a think tank for pmo and uh, extension of pmo uh, to take all these uh, decisions major decisions policy decisions for the country a uh, maximizing use of bamboo as an alternative timber uh, transfer of technology for establishing 100% 100% export oriented units with zero raw material waste developing a mechanism for direct of trade of certified bamboo products uh, reversing bamboo import balance of trade actually presently agarbatti incense stick presently 60 to 80% bamboo incense sticks are being imported li imported from uh, vietnam and china well, well once we have uh, indigenous bamboo sticks so the the uh, the plying back of the benefits to the the communities will be higher 
development and integrated national bamboo development policy providing directions for future development of the sector creation of bamboo development national bamboo development authority for convergence and synergy among all the federal and state schemes related to bamboo actually this as you have seen that this has been agreed upon by by these ministries but it has not it happened it, it's so slow so some some of the actions have already been taken there in pipeline but it has been very slow so uh, we have we are, it, it has to be uh, speeded up actually we had to expedite the whole process uh, declare bamboo as a national plant and uh, plantation crop bamboo based management practices charter should be developed uh, for facilitating standard practices in development uh, in different vertical verticals of bamboo sector restoration of wasteland and degraded land uh, lands through bamboo plantations uniform policy for tax exemptions and subsidies for bamboo bamboo products and bamboo machinery considering bamboo as green material that's very important actually um, uh, we have uh, taxation differently on uh, we have on raw material we have on product or we have on finished product use bamboo as breakthrough for triple s phenomenon this is basically skill scale and speed urban bamboo as an air purifier through urban uh, oxygen parks and roadside plantation uh, one has been initiated at regional bamboo uh, regional uh, science center if we remember uh, when wama came to india uh, he had around 80 air purifiers with him around him in, uh, in delhi a uh, mandatory use of uh, use of bamboo for office utility items and furniture in government offices uh, schools as far as possible include bamboo as building material in sos and tendering some states have initiated that establishing bamboo special economic zones in appropriate locations with provisions for tax exemptions for bamboo special economic zone establishment of bamboo incubation center for facilitating startups and msme like bopal university is doing strengthening existing processing units uh, through investment and grant actually madhya pradesh forest department has also got around 13 uh, 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 13 or 14 incubation centers we call them uh, uh, common facility centers of bamboo bamboo facility center but they have to be they have to be upgraded they have to be upgraded and uh, made operationalized operational uh, in a proper way strengthen existing bamboo applications technology centers and start dedicated bamboo resource technology and resource center promoting research and development and transfer of technology 100% export oriented units with zero waste exploring innovative use of bamboo enhancing bamboo productivity introduction of some courses actually include bamboo in the curriculum Uh, a different level diploma vocational and other training courses in deputed deputed institution with respect to nursery management plantation management post harvest management uh, processing uh, craft design and other allied vertical in bamboo sector actually there is one uh, college in bhopal uh, institute of uh, institute of excellence for higher education center for excellence they have uh, vocational courses on bamboo a uh, genetic uh, improvement of the by existing species and introduction of new species for different agroclimatic zone establishment of a high tech integrated germplasm bank and tissue culture lab at every state level state level for mass production of high quality seedlings and saplings use of bamboo as key species for green india mission bamboo orchard forest uh, establishment establish bamboo as paradigm for make make in india initiative bamboo can prove to be the most appropriate entity for make in india use bamboo for government infrastructure scheme like indira awas yojana um uh, philippines has done it uh, the government of philippines has done the uh, structure use bamboo for clean ganga program riparian management construct bamboo toilets on large scale such a bian scheme then uh, means to integrate bamboo with all the flagship programs of bam uh the country this is how make in india clean india housing mission green india mission these are the flagship programs of of uh, government of uh, federal government so bamboo fits into all these programs because of its uh, versatile attributes versatile qualities a develop a model bamboo state i suggested national bamboo mission a model bamboo state with an intensive inputs and support and convergence of all relevant schemes of different departments 
and uh, of course nestle organized national bamboo summit once in year and world bamboo summit in delhi every two years to strengthen international bamboo trade okay that's all so that the dream is india as the global bamboo bus sustainable development thank you very much so i thank you so much so i finished it in almost say uh, 30 31 32 minutes so sir so can we can take up some questions later sir And, main ek ek aap se jankari chah raha tha sir ji uh, is there any strength problem in this tissue culture system of bamboo or any of the wooden plants in especially in bamboo have you got any information that difficult after tissue culture sampling yes yeah. there is any chances of the less strength as compared to the natural bamboo actually actually uh, bamboo uh, uh, the tissue culture technology is used when we need uh, to multiply when is there is a uh, multiplication problem is there regeneration problem is there that so is my bamboo, question that is uh, my so question bamboo as with uh we don't require we don't require tissue culture plants for bamboo because you yeah, can but, but if you if you can want to uh, and uh, you know there, there's one thing if you if you uh, for uh, tissue culture means pampered yeah so you, you, have, you have to provide you have to provide the best condition in the field so uh, and uh, uh, so so uh, if the tissue culture plant when tissue culture plants are used for say captive plantation if you want to have a small captive plantation at 10 hectare and you have all best facilities like fertigation you have fertigation then tissue culture plant is fine otherwise tissue culture plants are not required because they, they are, not, it is not required i know because there there is no need because it's very easy to uh, plant bamboo anywhere but in some soils uh, it is not uh, plenty uh, available in plenty in other soils Mm. They have level plenty in Madhya Pradesh, mm. but uh, in uh, the plain state there is no bamboo mm. plantation. If bamboo plantation is at all being uh, taken from tissue culture, is there any tensile strength problem in tissue? No, no, culture? no. I, I don't think I don't, I don't think tensile strength problem is there. But a, a tissue culture plant sapling, the cost will be too high. Say they say say one one normal plant is twenty uh, uh, rupees. Tissue culture yeah. plant will be say forty rupees. Oh. So whether there is any value of by uh, value for uh, value and for money, well, why why do and and after after uh, after a label after say some time they 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 will be same. The growth pattern and everything will be same. So why why should you go for tissue culture? Ah, uh, the same yeah. problem is with other wooden plants also. I uh, I am only asking you the research question. That's all. Yeah. Okay, so now sir, in MP, sir, in MP uh, the normal uh, plant of bamboo costs around twelve rupees, uh, which is the government rate research and extension rate is twelve rupees per uh, plant. Whether for tissue culture plant it is rupees thirty. Uh, We yeah, have so some private growers who are growing tissue culture plants like in Bardwani and in Jabalpur, uh, and they are selling it at a cost of thirty rupees. Okay. so personally personally i will not suggest for tissue culture plants to be planted in wild if you want to have some very captive plantation where you can give intensive inputs like i said fertigation irrigation plus uh, fertilizer uh, fertigation then it is is fine or maybe the you uh, the biomass will be more uh, like like there are some examples uh, they are simple Sim, Simba, Simbasis, Simbasis has taken up some 16 hectare plantation for tissue culture plant for to cater to their energy requirements. Mm. Symbiotic. Its so, symbiotic relationship to किसी और plant से मैं देखा सुना तो नहीं मैंने कम है लेकिन हाँ कुछ plants ऐसे हैं जिसे symbiotic relationship है इसका bamboo इसका? bamboo बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं है इसका symbiotic relationship कम है किसी दूसरे के साथ Okay, so let's move to uh, Dr. Hans, and uh, he has already been introduced by Ria. So yeah. he is a, a great person in, uh, in, the, in the bamboo sector in the world. So, Dr. Hans, please. Uh, may I request Ajay sir to please uh, stop you, uh, presentation mode? Ajay sir, can you please stop your presentation mode? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry.
welcome dr hans from the barkatulla university bhopal on the, from side of the barkatulla university bhopal and the registrar is welcoming you please thank you very much indeed i hope you can see my first slide i hope it is in full mode because we had problems yesterday so your slides are visible but it's not in full mode it's not in full mode let me try like this yeah exactly. yes sir brilliant great well thank you very much indeed and thank you ajoy for giving me the chance to to speak today uh, because it's a real pleasure and quite an honor of course to speak on uh, world environment day virtually this time but nevertheless very important indeed um as i was introduced i i used to be the head of the international bamboo and rattan organization i'm currently still an ambassador of the world bamboo organization and i'm working with the european bamboo program uh, which i will talk a little bit about as well what i want to do today is is to talk you through uh, some of the sustainable development issues some of those have been touched by previous speakers but i hope i can still give you some new suggestions new ideas um, and generally my understanding of the issues um the slide was shown before in 2015 the world agreed with these uh, 17 sustainable development goals as part of the global 2030 development agenda and as ajoy says it's really this combination of the 17 goals that is the overall goal each goal individually cannot be seen as an activity it is the combination of the 17 goals and the 169 targets that are within these goals that really help us to reach sustainable development and i believe very strongly as we already heard today that bamboo can play a key role in these um sustainable development goals now bamboo doesn't grow everywhere again this map was shown before um living in europe for example bamboo is not a native plant bamboo does not grow in the northern territories um bamboo doesn't really or hardly grows in australia but there's a lot of bamboo in that gray area here in the in the tropical sector um we estimate at the moment it's about 50 million hectares altogether which sounds quite a lot but it's actually compared to the overall wood uh, timber availability a fraction so the fact that not bamboo doesn't grow everywhere and the fact that there are so many different types of bamboo mean that the relevance of bamboo for these different sustainable development goals varies from country to country but there are a few and i i joy mentioned some of them a few where i believe bamboo can really make a difference and i guess the most important one is the first goal which is to end poverty bamboo is is an amazing plant as far as that's concerned as we know most of the people in northeast india depend on bamboo for their livelihoods um and as a local farmer in vietnam expressed it recently i have bamboo in my garden and i consider it a bank in my backyard because when i need some money i cut a few poles and i sell them it's a real opportunity but in addition to that um as we saw earlier the bamboo leaves can be eaten by the cattle the bamboo shoots are human uh, there are mushrooms in bamboo goats and chicken eat bamboo leaves and provide natural fertilizer and all of this of course contributes and helps to reduce poverty and to improve livelihoods bamboo could also play a key role for energy i think it was mentioned before um there's a lot one can do by bamboo it can be burned as Excuse me, sir. Uh, firewood Excuse me sir dr hans your yes. ppt is not rolling the ppt is not going yes your ppt is not rolling please do the setting now uh, are you are you are you talking on the first slide only or you are moving this no, slide no 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 i'm moving ah, no they're I'm not already moving. on slide maybe no, i'll go like this can you you can see it yeah now we can see please click on the reading view i, I will stay like this in that case doesn't please matter click the reading view icon on the top left hand corner on the floor. yes let's just continue the way they are at the moment as i said you know bamboo for energy is is very interesting you can either burn it like firewood you can basically uh, use it as um, <coughs> excuse me as charcoal um or you can even make it a syngas 
But I think what is very interesting is that the United Nations Forum on Forest still estimates that about 2 billion people depend on uh, wood fuel. And most of that is charcoal. And of course, most of the charcoal is actually produced currently from wood fuel, very often illegally harvested, um, which in itself is a principal driver of deforestation. Bamboo could be a very sustainable alternative for wood charcoal. And lucrative business does exist already in India and in several African countries. For household fuel users, bamboo charcoal could be a real alternative to what we're using at the moment. At a slightly larger scale, though, we can use bamboo either in pellet form or otherwise uh, chips to gasify. And again, this is something that is being done in India. It's basically generating electricity directly from the charcoal and from the bamboo. So another way of using bamboo for energy, a more innovative and modern way is to actually use the bamboo fibers to construct these wind blades of the new the modern turbines for hydropower and uh, wind energy. This is a very emerging field of research at the moment, and a lot of it is R&D. But some of these windmills are actually in operation already. We mentioned already before that, of course, bamboo is an amazing way of creating jobs. I won't talk you through this slide because there's lots of words in there. But basically, together, I think India and China already employ some 20 million people in the bamboo sector. And in fact, I've seen statistics that globally, uh, there is a suggestion that maybe one billion people depend on bamboo. And these jobs range from, you know, managing plantations, harvesting, reprocessing, processing, sorting, cleaning, cutting, treating, splitting, uh, manufacturing, trading, selling. There is an enormous value chain of bamboo which creates jobs everywhere. These jobs are still mainly small and medium enterprises. And that's one of the things I think that Ajoy was talking about. We have lots of small and medium enterprises in countries where bamboo grows. We also have small and medium enterprises in the market countries, in let's say Europe and, and, and the US, which are currently the main markets for the international trade. What we are lacking is big multinational bamboo companies. They simply don't exist yet. And I think if we want to make bamboo really a source for uh, sustainable development, that's something we should be looking into. And it sort of addresses Ajoy's issue about the gap between the manufacturing and the actual market. Cities and communities. Charu showed us already some of the construction work that has been done. Um, but of course, bamboo has a major opportunity. I think one of the interesting things is for affordable housing and dwellings that can be rapidly made, bamboo is starting to become the construction material of choice. One of the other issues is that we know bamboo structures are actually withstanding earthquakes. We have a lot of experience, particularly in Latin America, in Ecuador, in uh, Peru, in, in Colombia, and some of that experience has been transferred to other countries. This is work in Nepal after the earthquake a few years ago to restore schools with a structure that looks very similar to some of the work that I saw from Charu Korde, which is basically earthquake proof. If there is an earthquake, this will move, it will bend, but it will not fall apart like a structure made from concrete. The other side of the coin is that modern designers, urban designers, top architects are now specifying bamboo for their creations because of its durability, but also because of its look and its sustainability. This is an example from Paris. It's the Gare du Nord, one of the, one of the, mo the busiest um, railway stations in Europe. This flooring is bamboo. And basically it was put there because it's about the only, car the only parquet flooring that is durable and strong enough to basically withstand the, uh, the force, as it were, of all those millions of people that go through this railway station on a weekly basis. Bamboo is also quite an amazing product when it comes to responsible consumption and sustainable production. 
again, a slide that was shown earlier, the great thing about bamboo is every bit can be used. And one of the specific targets in this sustainable development goal is about reducing waste. So if you have bamboo and you, you make big things from bamboo, you can pretty well use every single bit. And on top of that, if you have the waste, you can do things with it as well. This is an amazing example in Canada, where basically a company is using chopsticks from restaurants, which they collect, used chopsticks, and they're repurposing those chopsticks to make chopping boards, planks, furniture, um, and beautiful things that are sold at a high price. A real circular economy using bamboo to repurpose it for something else. The other thing is, and that's a very interesting one as well, that under this sustainable development goal, green procurement is considered to be an issue. We, Ajoy talked about this already. If local governments, if councils can actually basically uh, make the use of bamboo compulsory, of course, governments can really support the development of industry. This is in, in Europe, this is in the Netherlands, where some local cities have realized that making their traffic signs from bamboo is cheaper and more durable than the ones they have at the moment, which are normally made from metal and they're rusting and therefore they're not really all that useful. So something that local governments and even national governments could really do to support the bamboo industry is to make the use of bamboo for furniture, for these kind of things like uh, traffic signs or for other purposes, literally compulsory, and therefore basically put in place green procurement regulations. Maybe the most important one at the moment is climate action. We all talk about climate change and what can bamboo do for that. On the one hand, of course, bamboo is fantastic for mitigation. It sucks up more, bam more carbon than trees even, um, as we heard already earlier. Basically, the carbon in bamboo is a combination of three things. It is the natural total ecosystem carbon, which is basically the carbon that exists in the natural environment. Now, the good thing about bamboo is that a lot of that is stored in the roots and not just in the poles. So when you cut the poles, a lot of that carbon maintains and retains in the soil. But when you cut the poles and you make furniture or flooring or any other durable product, that carbon is locked up. So it's another way of actually capturing the carbon. The last point using carbon is that if you use bamboo as an alternative to PVC or uh, concrete or steel, you know, a very high um, abiotic product, high carbon abiotic product, then of course it's added again because it is basically the, the displacement value. All these three things together mean that a healthy carbon, a healthy bamboo plantation in China has as much as 530 tons of carbon per hectare. Now, this is China, which is not a tropical climate. And I guess if we did these measurements in tropical climate, it might be even more. So a very effective and a very efficient natural carbon sink. But it's not just the mitigation that makes bamboo interesting. It's also the question that bamboo bends, but does not break. I mean, any farmer that has bamboo in its field basically has a option for economic survival when, for whatever reasons, the production of fruit or vegetables doesn't work. So bamboo is really a tool to help with the resilience against climate change as well, both important for mitigation and for adaptation. Life on land is the last one. Of course, life on land is equally very important for bamboo. Um, this slide shows you all the ecosystem services that bamboo provides. Again, I won't talk you through it. You can see it here. This is something that was provided by the Center for International Forest Research in uh, Jakarta and in Indonesia. Um, I've talked about some of these already, but I want to just touch on a few specific ones that relate to this sustainable development goal. Maybe the most obvious one is the biodiversity aspect. Um, some of the most critical um, endangered species, but real key species do depend on bamboo. 
like the gorillas in East and Central Africa, or lemurs in Madagascar, like the red panda in India and Nepal, or the giant black and white panda in China. But there are also frogs and birds and other species that are particularly uh, living in bamboo forests. So bamboo is actually quite important for this maintenance of biodiversity and maintenance of ecosystem health. But maybe more important, certainly at the moment, because the theme for this year's World Environment Day is ecosystem restoration. The, the way that bamboo grows with its extensive root systems, the fact that it's a grass and when you cut it, it basically remains healthy and it then has new shoots the following year, that makes bamboo a very unique and effective tool to control erosion and maintain slope stability and even restore land. This report that was produced a few years ago by FAO and INBA has a, you know, a series of examples, one of which is from India. Um, very interesting how bamboo was used in an area in Allahabad, which basically was a brick making area. And in order to get that land back in productivity, bamboo was planted, which created fertility and allowed the land to start producing food crops and other crops. And it is now an economically very viable area. So bamboo has a real opportunity there. Now, this is an interesting one as well, because it is not just in countries where we are working at the moment. The Philippines, this is last year, late last year, actually decided, and I think I, Joy may have mentioned the Philippines as well, they basically said this is really important and miners are now required to basically restore their mines by planting bamboo. So the government is seeing that value. Similar discussions are taking place in some African countries. I'm aware of uh, Ghana and Cameroon. And when I was with Imba, we talked with Peru in Latin America about the same issues. So actually using bamboo to restore degraded land and to restore mined land as an opportunity to create uh, basically fiber and other products. And we're even doing this in Europe, interesting enough. As I mentioned earlier, bamboo is not a native plant in Europe, but it grows very well. This is in France. Bamboo plantation, a bamboo garden, basically, as you can see, very healthy, very happy. So bamboo is an opportunity for Europe. And in fact, as I mentioned in the beginning, one of my roles is to work with the European Bamboo Program. And we are basically planting these bamboo seedlings in Portugal to create the first industrial bamboo plantation in Europe. The aim is to create a source of bamboo here as well, and to think about how we can, on the one hand, support agricultural development and looking at the environmental aspects of soil remediation, uh, land restoration and climate change mitigation. And on the other hand, thinking about a, a source of bamboo fiber within Europe and therefore avoiding the transport costs that would otherwise be critical when we bring things from across the world. The final SDG is the SDG of partnerships. And I think this is something again that was really uh, what, what struck me when I was with Imba. Bamboo is really a plant of the global south. And it is a fantastic tool, if I can use that word, for south-south cooperation and collaboration. This report was done together with the UN Office for South-South Cooperation. And we were looking at how we can actually share information um, and think about what we can do. Um, certainly, when, when I was with IMBA, we had a lot of information sharing, technology transfer, which is something our joint mentioned is so important, and capacity building. And we reached trainees from many different countries. But I think, again, what is something that has already come through a number of times. This was done in China. It can be done in India. You have an India-Africa cooperation agreement, and there is uh, some real opportunities, I think, for direct cooperation between India-Africa and between India and South Asia to actually play that role of the, the, the catalyst uh, for the development of bamboo in the region 
and globally. So again, taking a leaf from what Ajoy was saying, if bamboo is so fantastic, why has it not actually helped? Why is it not more prominent? I see four reasons, and Ajoy mentioned some others as well. I think one of the issues is that bamboo goods still form a relatively small niche market based on small and medium sized enterprises, as I said, and bamboo products, therefore, are often expensive. I think one of the main reasons is that there simply isn't enough planted bamboo. And I think that's the key thing, bamboo that can be used for industrial development. It was mentioned earlier, even although India has 16 million hectares, not all of that is available for production. China, um, I think at the moment, has something like 7 million hectares, but it's only 3 to 3.5 million that is used for production. Peru and, and, and Brazil have large areas of bamboo, but most of it is not actually utilized. So what we need is to plant bamboo. We need to plant more, especially in those countries where there is degraded land, where there is manpower available, and that would basically allow bamboo to be planted. And I'm thinking here of some Asian countries, most of Africa, and certainly in Latin America. But as I said earlier, we're even planting in Europe. I think the second thing is the issue of international standards. The problem with international trade is that there are no accepted international rules and regulations for bamboo. Of course, there are a few. Um, I think somebody mentioned FSC already. Often bamboo products are sold with an FSC label. Whether that actually makes sense is questionable because bamboo isn't a forest product. It isn't timber. Um, so there may be even other certification schemes that would be more applicable. But what is more important is when it comes to the actual manufacturing, we have national rules, we have national regulations. India has its own standards, but there are very few internationally agreed standards and regulations. And I think that's very important if we want to promote the global development of bamboo. The third is the need for further training, awareness and transfer of technology. It was mentioned a number of times, you know, managing a bamboo plantation is not the same as managing a tree plantation. Manufacturing of bamboo products requires skills, different skills and specialist know-how. Understanding the values and the challenges of the global trade of bamboo depends on the knowledge and awareness of what bamboo actually can do. Some of this capacity building is taking place, but we need much more, both at the national level and internationally. And I think finally, we are missing the investment. And again, this is a little bit what Ash Ajoy was talking about, I think, in the gap between the manufacturing and the market. We, we haven't got the big investments in bamboo yet. It seems that despite the fact that the current international emphasis on green development and sustainability should provide ample opportunities for investment, we haven't really got it yet. So I think what we need to do there is to really provide more information to illustrate to the investment community the excellent potential of the return on investment of bamboo. But with those challenges, I guess my conclusion still is bamboo can play an extremely important role in sustainable development. I've mentioned a few. That does not mean that bamboo has no role in health and well-being or gender equality or some of the other SDGs. But I think the ones that I mentioned are the ones where I think bamboo can make the most impact. I think the specific relevance of bamboo, as mentioned earlier, varies from country to country and the products that can be manufactured. But they should be considered in the national socio-economic development plans and in the nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement, especially in countries like India, where bamboo is such a part of your natural flora. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much and a very happy World Environment Day. Thank you very much, Hans. It was wonderful. So recapturing all the all the issues
of bamboo based development and bamboo sustainable development interface so i hand over to uh, any questions any any questions any comments to anybody yeah, hands or me any queries kuch puchna hai kisi ko kuch kehna chahte hain uh sir i want to say something yeah uh, first of all uh we are very fortunate that uh, for balaghat and uh, for developing the bamboo center here it's a, a very uh, pleasurable news for us and uh, second thing is that thank you dr hans for the wonderful presentation uh, i want to ask a query i ask a question uh, is there any specific species of bamboo which we are using in india or there is a vari variable species which we can use for art architecture and uh, uh architecture and food and for food please you know in total sorry yes sir in total there are more than 1600 species of bamboo i think the the figure at the last count was something like 1642 so you have many species in india and they are all useful um some of them are maybe better for construction than others uh, particularly the bigger ones you know dendrocalamus is is a particularly useful one um some of the philostachys can be used very well as well but i think you have the the great opportunity that with the wealth of your bamboo flora with the size of your forest with the the local knowledge of bamboo the traditional knowledge there are immense opportunities and india could be really the world leading country on bamboo development i think um china was maybe lucky that they started some years ago but i think this is the time to take take charge of your of your opportunities and and develop the bamboo particularly in the south asia region and as i said through some opportunities for collaboration as well can, can i add uh, something to friends okay uh, yes, actually china through through their researches and experiences and um, uh, practices they have come to only one species mosho bamboo which is a monopodial bamboo and i am told hence may correct me that now they are going back to the sympodial bamboo so ours is a sympodial bamboo that's one thing in um, india we have 136 or 37 species and uh, i think by, uh, india has an opportunity to select few species uh, as per the use use based uh, species like for food as per they like, like for furniture for construction construction bamboos are bamboos is the best and uh, for for furniture like um, uh, this or uh, 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 some other like bamboos are bulgaris bamboos are bamboos are bulgaris is as a good uh, species but there are there are few species which are good for furniture there are species which are good for construction there are species for which are good for uh, food so we can have a combination of species for uh, for our uh, end use purpose Or, thank you so much sir thank you for the enlightening knowledge and the sir, one I, madhya pradesh mein madhya pradesh mein lagbhag 15 species 